Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Chris Pappenfuss. I'm here with our uh, children's ministry director, Stephanie Carlson. And Stephanie and I have been involved in a conversation that we've started recently. And as we've been talking about uh, this topic that we're going to talk about today, we thought, you know, it would be a great idea to uh, include the rest of the church family in this, this conversation to the degree that we can. And so, uh, Stephanie, what you and I have been talking about, especially in uh, these, this time of increased restrictions around COVID, is the, the loss that we have experienced in regards to sacred spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. We've heard from people in our congregation saying, oh, we miss being in the sanctuary. Oh, we want to be back in the sanctuary. Uh, there's all of these things that, that we recognize that we're not able to have in our lives right now, and we genuinely miss those. And so that's kind of what we've been talking about, right? And right. What, how do we respond to that? Right. right. Well, I think, Chris, we have to ask ourselves what, or we'll ask you, what is a sacred space and why is it important? That's a great, that's a great question. And, um, you know, when I think of a sacred space, I really think of it as a, a physical space. For me, it's, it's a physical, it's a location. It's this uh, physical space that is set apart. It's, it's holy. We, we set it apart and say this is holy space. And it's uh, for the intentional purpose of connecting with God. So when I think of sacred space, it's, it's physical space that's set aside with the intentional purpose of connecting with God. And in that space, we seek to eliminate other distractions of the world. And, uh, and I think that's really important. And it's set apart because we recognize that so much of the rest of our life is that we often ask God to come with us in our life, right? God, come with me to work today. God, come with me to school today. God, uh, bless me in my efforts. Uh, but sacred space is less about asking God to join us in our spaces and us intentionally, you and I and, and our church family, going into God's space. It's like we, we say, this God, this belongs to you, and we are coming as your guest into your sacred space. And, um, and by God's mercy, right, he allows us, he invites us into this sacred space. We don't get to stay there because then God says, okay, now it's time for leave. Go out from this sacred space. And the, the awesome thing about our, our indwelling God is that God then goes with us, right, from that sacred space back into our places. So when we talk about missing our sacred spaces, that's real. That's legitimate. I mean, that's a hole in, in our life that we are, are missing. And, and so when we think about that, I guess, Stephanie, I, I would ask you, as you hear me talking about that, what goes into a sacred space or what makes space sacred? Sure. Well, and I think, you know, when we look at the Advent season, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm, right now I'm sitting in my dining room with my Christmas tree, which it's is right in my living room. Yeah. And, and, and I think, how am I going to make this a sacred space, right? Like my laundry's right next to me, like all of these things. And, um, and I think that's, that's perhaps a real thought for everybody. Um, but some of the things that, you know, we need to be focusing on is um, the Holy Spirit makes our space sacred, right? Yep. And, um, and, and, and it's just a space unless we invite the Holy Spirit to be there with us. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, just even within family worship, we, we were just learning about the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. and, and that became holy because God dwelled there. Right. And, and when we think of, so inviting the Holy Spirit into our space is, is key. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I think about is um, symbols. And the Advent Christmas season, we have tons of symbols. Like I said, we got like a Christmas tree. Some people have Jesse trees. There's nativity sets. But these mm -hmm. symbols help us um, kind of frame and, and hands-on learn. And so I think of Advent and we use a wreath or candles, right? Mm -hmm. yep, and, yep. and those, that candle or those candles or that wreath set, um, that helps us hands-on learn and understand that with those candles, like Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world. He tells us right. he came into the light to push out the darkness, right? And when we believe in him, we will no longer live in the darkness. And when I think of for kids, 
um, what a great opportunity to um, to really unpack that with them right. and to hands on learn that that's what that means. That's why we light this candle or um, that's why we say Jesus is the light of the world. Um, and then I think the other thing to focus on is uh, anticipation. And, you know, we, we anticipate encountering God, but also Advent means coming, right? And right. when I think I'm, somebody's coming to my house or I'm going somewhere, I am anticipating that experience. And we know, we know Jesus has already come, but we anticipate his second coming too. So there's, right. there's so much anticipation in, in this Advent season. And, um, and we get to do this, this season in our homes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Chris, so because we get to do this in our homes, you know, what, what and how tangibly can we do this? How yeah. can our, con our congregation and even our families do this? Yeah. Season? That's a great, great thing. And I love that you're, you're framing this within the concept of, of our time that we're in right now with, with Advent, right? How do, we, how do we do this? I love that you brought up tabernacle, right? The whole sense of the tabernacle was that it was portable because the people weren't going to stay where they were in that location in the desert, right? They were a people in transit. And so God gave them sacred space that was uh, uh, able to be moved. Uh, it, was a, it was a mobile tabernacle is a mobile temple and so we're kind of in that phase too where uh, how do we bring that sacred space into our homes because that's where we're basically confined to <laughs> in a lot of ways uh, so great question and I think what we are asking our families our church family to consider is intentionally as you decorate your house for the Christmas season to uh, set apart space, space that can be sacred space. Maybe that is the location where you're going to uh, listen to the Sunday morning uh, services um, that, that are going to be there. Find an area in that space. And you brought up an Advent wreath. Let's, let's set up candles, uh, light. Uh, maybe there are lanterns, uh, uh, oil lamps. Maybe it's just a single candle, but, but something in there that we can use as that tangible symbol of light in darkness. And traditionally an Advent wreath uh, is comprised of five candles. We have the um, hope candle, we have the joy candle, we have the love candle, we have the peace candle, and then on Christmas Eve we light the Christ candle. And in each of those, as the light gets brighter from these, uh, this collection of candles, it symbolizes, yes, God is at work and God is moving. And to be able to carve out that space, that sacred space right in there, create that, that um, Advent wreath. And we are going to, as part of our Sunday morning services online, we will have readings every Sunday that invite us to light another candle of our Advent wreath. Other practical, tangible things, you know, I, I think about families. We would watch uh, the service right in our living room. Well, sometimes that means we got to clean up the mess Saturday night so that come Sunday morning, we're ready to enter into space. Do we say right now, this space is sacred space. And, and we invite the Holy Spirit to be present. This for us is more than just our living room. This becomes our sanctuary. Yeah. for encountering the living God. It takes intentionality, but then the symbols that we introduce in that space can really be uh, meaningful. And I think um, if we can incorporate these symbols um, now, that potentially there might be opportunity that these symbols would take on greater meaning for us in the future. Too. So I don't know, Stephanie, if you've, been thinking, if you've been thinking about that, what could we gain if we do this now what can we uh, maybe expect from this moving forward? Yeah. Well, one thing that I know that in having conversations as a staff months ago, when we were on strictly online and not in person, one of the things that um, I know your family and the May family and many of our other families had appreciated about online is the opportunity to press pause. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so if, if maybe there was a good nugget or maybe you didn't catch something, you could pause it and, and talk about it or rewind it and re-listen to it. 
And that's not something that we get to do when we're in the sanctuary together, right? Nope. Nope. And, and I think, you know, we as, as parents, you know, maybe some of this stuff is over our kids' heads, but we can pause it and say, you know, I didn't quite understand that. Or what does it mean to hope in Jesus? Or what does it mean to have joy when everything around us is in chaos? And, and what does it mean to have joy in Jesus? Or what does it mean to love Jesus? And we can, we can pause our TVs and talk about those things. Things that we wouldn't be able to do if we were in church together, right. in the physical church building. Mm -hmm. And so then I think too, you know, like next year, what could next Advent look like? You know, we've now this, you know, 2020 Advent season, we've done all this stuff in our homes. And now it's just this tangible experience that our kids and our families have, have experienced together. And then next year, when we have Advent 2021, and we are in the sanctuary, you know, we can, we can lean over and say, remember when mm. we were in our living room around the dining room or around the dining room table. And we lit that candle and we, we talked about, you know, how you, you hope in Jesus or, um, and, and we can bring it back to that. And that's a memory right. and, and a marker in our kid's head. That's going to be like, Oh, Oh, that's right. That was a big deal. And that meant something. And, and for our kids, you know, when we think of discipleship and we think of passing that down generation to generation to generation, you know, that might be a memory for us, but then it becomes a memory for our kids that they get to pass on when they become parents and they get to pass on when they become parents. So who knows, maybe what we're doing this year ends up becoming a tradition in, in, in our families to come. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to limit the Holy spirit. That's there, for sure. there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Chris, I think, I mean, if people have, if people have questions on any of this, can they, can they get a hold of you or even myself? I think yeah, that's something yeah. that can happen too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Email us. If you're thinking about, hey, you know, we want to create sacred space in our household. What, what could we do? What could that look like? Um, be willing to share other ideas. If you, if you set up an advent wreath, I'd love for you to take a picture of it and send oh, yeah. it to me or Stephanie. Uh, uh, you can just email it to us. We'd love to see what are kind of the, the spaces and the symbols that you are going to create. And I love what you said, the intentionality of it. Um, let's make sure we're inviting the Holy Spirit. Let's make sure that our symbols that we're using are intentional and purposeful. Think of them like doors and windows in which we get to see and, and enter into God's presence more so. And I love what you said about go in with anticipation. Expect to encounter God in, in these times. And I think if we can, if we can do that, um, we might find that we're able to carve out some pretty special spaces to yeah. interact with God. So Stephanie, thank you. Um, let's continue the dialogue. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate your wisdom and your love for our families. Um, obviously, this isn't just limited to um, uh, families with little kids in the mm -hmm. house. This is for everybody in our church. Even if you're living alone and you want to connect with the broader church family, find some candles, uh, get them together. And when you sit down and watch the service, use that as a way of of physically connecting you in that sacred space, reminding you that um, we're in this together as the body of Christ. So thank you. I uh, hope this was helpful uh, for you as Stephanie and I are going through our uh, thought process and ramblings, uh, but would love to hear from you. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions. Have a great day. We're praying for you and with you as we go through this Advent time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.